Continuing on my recent trend of reading about money and the economy and things like fiscal policy, I thought it would be interesting to dive into a relevant and comprehensive book by David Graeber. And this particular book, among many other things, tackles some common myths and misconceptions about the origins of debt and money and other things like that. In fact, one of my favorite takeaways from the book is a complete dismantling of the very common myth of the origins of money. And if you've ever read anything about economics or you've studied economics, you've almost certainly heard the story where once upon a time there was barter. And if you wanted something that somebody else had, you needed to trade something that you had for what they had and Worse still, if they didn't want what you had, then you had to go about orchestrating some really complex bartering to get what it is that you wanted. So for example, if you ran an apple orchard and you wanted to acquire a sheep, but the person with the sheep didn't want apples, well, you were in a tough spot and you'd have to have this really complex barter to get what you wanted for what it is that you happen to have. Well, as it turns out, this whole barter myth that is very, very common in economics never actually happened. This was never a real thing. Now, there are examples, as covered in the book, of neighboring tribes bartering with each other, perhaps on a fairly regular basis, maybe once a year or once every six months, getting together and engaging in large-scale barter. But when it comes to within a society or within a tribe, this kind of barter really never actually happened. There's no evidence out there that this actually happened. In fact, a relevant quote in the book from Caroline Humphrey of Cambridge says, no example of a barter economy, pure and simple, has ever been described, let alone the emergence from it of money. All available ethnography suggests that there never has been such a thing. The book goes on to explain the actual origins of money in various societies and the history of things like debt, and it covers other interesting insights such as the purpose behind taxation. Many people believe that taxation is simply about raising money for the government. But as mentioned both in this book and a book like The Deficit Myth, the key idea behind taxation is to create demand for the currency. When the central government says that every citizen of the country or the region must pay taxes in a specific currency, they're effectively creating demand for that currency. They're saying you need to find some way to earn this particular currency in order to pay your taxes. And as a result, that currency is able to flourish. And so rather than simply being a mechanism to raise money for the government, because of course, governments, so long as they control their own fiscal policy, they can print money whenever they need it. Instead, taxation is really about serving two things. Number one, being able to create demand for the currency. And then number two, it's a mechanism for pulling money back out of the economy so that you can avoid things like inflation. But anyway, Anyway, if you're interested in these kinds of ideas around the origins of money and the history of debt and just getting a different perspective on things like how economies have operated in the past, then I recommend that you pick up a copy of Debt by David Graeber. 